Welcome to NYNJPA Weather, your severe weather source for the northern mid-Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. The visible satellite picture this morning already shows clear skies over much of the northern mid-Atlantic, but we already have severe thunderstorms starting to develop over portions of northwestern Connecticut and central Connecticut as of 9.30 a.m. this morning. Looks like we're going to have to be dealing with that a lot. But first, we're going to have to deal with the heat and humidity. Yesterday, we had several locations with record-breaking highs, basically in the upper 90s for most locations. Newark got up to 99 degrees. Philadelphia, 98 degrees. It was a very hot afternoon, and we can expect more of the same this afternoon, possibly even warmer. I would not be surprised if some locations in and around the Philadelphia metropolitan area and New York City metropolitan area pushes 100 degrees before the thunderstorms come. But how strong will these thunderstorms be? Now, that is the question. Let's take a look at the latest water vapor satellite picture because there's some interesting features to break down. First, I want to talk about the severe weather that's going on right now. It, basically, we have a mid-level disturbance embedded in this northwesterly flow over Connecticut that is producing a few severe thunderstorms. These thunderstorms are not going to last very long as the boundary lifts north and west, but if you are in northwestern Connecticut, central and eastern Connecticut, watch out for a few scattered showers and an isolated severe thunderstorm. The primary impact from this thunderstorm is strong wind gusts over 60 miles per hour and large hail up to a quarter size. But what about the rest of the northern mid-Atlantic? Well, I have an area circled in yellow over Canada. And what that is, that's, our, that's the strongest upper level feature in this pattern. This is the base of the polar trough and the jet stream. And notice I have the upper level winds overlaid. And you can see where the strongest jet streak is starting to develop, basically from, eastern, from the eastern Great Lakes to the St. Lawrence River Valley towards New England. Why is all of this important? Well, basically what we're seeing here is that the entire region, all of the northern Atlantic and all of New England, will become very unstable. The atmosphere is going to be very warm, obviously, plenty of moisture. The question remains, where is the trigger going to be? And it looks like the best upper-level dynamics will be focused from the eastern Great Lakes through central New York into New England. Does that mean the northern mid-Atlantic has no thunderstorms? No. But it does mean that when these severe thunderstorms start to ignite and start to explode, one of two things is going to happen. One, the thunderstorms become very severe, and because of they become so severe, they create mesoscale subsidence over the northern mid-Atlantic, basically weakening and killing off the thunderstorms this evening. Or two, the outflow boundary from these strong to severe thunderstorms over central New York work southeast towards the northern Atlantic, producing line segments of strong to severe thunderstorms featuring very strong wind gusts. Either one of these can happen, and we're going to have to keep an eye on exactly how this pattern evolves over the next several hours. But there is a high potential that the northern Atlantic misses out on the worst of the severe weather and the brunt of the severe weather remains over New England. Now, those of you in the Hudson Valley and parts of Connecticut, you're no way out of the woods yet. You, are, you have the most likely potential for severe weather in the forecast area. So keep posted and stay with NYNJPA weather via Twitter or on the website, and I will keep you posted of the latest severe weather, just like I have this morning. So... What we can expect is this severe thunderstorm line to move through later on this evening. I'm looking at a start time between 4 p.m. and 2, 4 p.m. this afternoon and 2 a.m. tonight. So we're definitely going to have a very crazy and active weather pattern over the next 24 hours. But what about this weekend? Well, let's take a look. This is the 500 millibar forecast with the European model guys from Penn State EWAL. And the first thing I want to point out is that our ridge over the southeast never really breaks down. It does get suppressed, but doesn't collapse. And as a result, our cold front never really makes it completely through the northern Atlantic. It stalls over the region. The heat and humidity will be gone. 
but will still remain near normal as far as temperatures. And weak waves of low pressure will move along this stationary front and produce a threat for scattered showers starting tomorrow afternoon and continuing on all the way through this week and into early next week. Now, this is not a washout for the weekend, but just be, keep in mind that there will be a chance of a scattered shower here or there each day. Again, not all locations are going to see rain this weekend. In fact, some locations could end up being completely dry. And these showers are going to be relatively weak for the most part, as the best dynamics are clearly focused well to the north in Canada. But, as I said, keep in mind that there will be a shower, so if you have any type of outdoor activity, you're going to a baseball game, a picnic, bring an umbrella with you, and be safe. By Tuesday, the cold front is well off the coast, our trough is starting to exit off into the Atlantic, and a new ridge is starting to develop over the plains. Now, our high pressure system is going to be located at the surface over the eastern Great Lakes, which means a northwesterly flow will be in place over the Philadelphia and New York City metropolitan area, reducing humidity and keeping temperatures near normal. But a moderation tra trend is on the way, and much warmer conditions can be expected by the end of next in week. In fact, as we look at next weekend, a rather familiar pattern starts to develop. That's right, our ridge is back. We have a trough in the west, and as a result, our ridge in the east is going to build, and our high-pressure system that was located over the Great Lakes is now sitting off the southeast coast. And that means a southwesterly flow will be in place once again. Our storm track is going to be positioned from the southern plains into southeastern Canada. And that basically means that if you think the hot and humid conditions are over for this summer, I got some bad news for you. It's not. And besides this model guidance, there's a lot of support out there via the position of convection around the tropics and the stratospheric cooling that has been going on over the past couple of months that would support a sustained ridge over the southeast and as a result the periods of hot and humid conditions like what we're seeing now will be far more frequent than what we saw last summer or what's being discussed in some locations so clearly we're dealing with a pattern that will produce many bouts of hot and humid conditions and yes even some severe weather Thank you for trusting in NYNJPA Weather as your severe weather source for the northern mid-Atlantic. I'm your meteorologist, Stephen DiMartino. And to keep abreast of the latest severe weather, please stay with us uh, tw at Twitter, on this website, and of course, through Facebook. Have a safe afternoon.